very much, Bob, Bob Pisani. And given all the regulation talk around the crypto space, we couldn't help but bring in our own crypto baller, BK, to weigh in on what Brett Redfern just said. What, what stood out to you? There's a uh, lot there. I, I, there, there's a lot there. So the challenge that, that uh, Mr. Redfern has and all regulators has, we have a global asset mm -hmm. that's subject to local regulation, right. right? So that's what everybody's wrestling with. Not only that, what stood out to me is the hybrid nature of these assets, okay? So if you're doing an ICO and I'm giving somebody money to start their software, maybe that's, maybe that's a security. But once that network is live and once that coin is being used as effectively as commodity or oil within the machine, then maybe that's a commodity. So I think what we're going to look at, what we're looking at, and Chairman Giancarlo said some really good things about this, is kind of a hybrid approach right. to these assets. Well, I mean, that's exactly the dilemma that Ethereum faces, correct? I mean, Ethereum Precisely. had these coins initially, but now it's its own network functioning, and it's more like a commodity at this point, the token either. That's right. And in fact, it's called gas when you spend right. Ethereum to run the network. And so we'll have to have some standardization around what does it mean to be a decentralized network? You know, how much does it, how many nodes do you have to be decentralized and some definitions around that it wouldn't surprise me if the SEC came out and said something like you know Ethereum might have been a security at one point but today it's a commodity um, I'm so glad that Bob asked about market manipulation because there are Bitcoin whales out there there are ICO whales out there when it's a, a handful of holders owning the vast majority of a single uh, asset so Bitcoin what 40 percent of Bitcoin held by a thousand wallets or so some, roughly something, something, yeah, around something around that right around that. yeah Con Who's to say that nobody's uh, dumping it all together, colluding and, and then dumping the... Uh, we've seen it in every single market, right? I mean, yeah. we've, seen, we've seen it in LIBOR, we've seen it in currencies, we've seen it everywhere. So, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me to see it happening here. Um, you know, of the Bitcoin whales, a lot of those are the holders, right? They've had it forever, they're never going to sell it. Beeks, is there a risk that the SEC is kind of slow to regulate and there's other countries who kind of... So he does bring up that good point about the whales and the market uh, manipulation. And uh, I do believe that for the most part, a lot of these big whales have an interest to bring up the price. So yes, there could be some manipulation on some of the players, but for the most part, if you own this asset class, it's in your interest to obviously long term let the price go up so there is obviously risks when you invest in crypto and uh, the future regulations of crypto are still kind of un unclear so there is the aspect of the wild west but for the most part i do believe the people that are in this space truly are passionate about this and they do want to see long-term growth so i would not be worried about it but let me know your thoughts on this and i will talk to you guys soon